Hello, Ray, Ray Wheatley for five years. I'm here with the former IBF and WBA middleweight champ, Daniel Gale, who was uh, getting ready to fight as a super middleweight. How are you, Daniel? Yeah, good, thanks, Ray. Good to see you again, mate. Daniel, um, you're getting ready to, uh, to step up a division and fight as a super middleweight. You'll be much stronger that, that way. Yeah, I believe so. You know, we've, we've done it pretty tough uh, for a few years with middleweight. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess it, it was a, a decision, especially after the last fight, you know, I needed to make a few changes. And uh, at the moment, you know, I feel really strong. Um, mm -hmm. and I feel really confident that the, the next part of my career is going to go well. And you're still, you're still very hungry? Still very hungry, yeah. You, you, know, wanna, I mean, you want to prove a few things? Yeah, I mean, every time you get a loss, you mm -hmm. know, um, I guess that hunger burns a little bit deeper. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just confident now that, you know, these, these little changes that I've made are mm -hmm. going to be for the best. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there's plenty more still left in me. Some big fights left in Daniel Girl. Definitely. Now, Daniel, if you, if, um, when you do come back, um, there are several Aussies that are well rated at Super Middles. Now, We've got Zach Dunn, who's uh, WBC number eight, fought last week, uh, two weeks ago on ESPN. Very exciting fighter. Uh, what would you think about fighting Zach Dunn? You know, I'd, I'd love to fight Zach. Um, you know, we, we had done some sparring before when oh, Zach right. was a little bit younger, and uh, okay. you know, he's, he's a great fighter, a mm -hmm. great young kid. And uh, you know, I, I guess if, if that one came up, you know, I'd, I'd definitely be confident. You'd be confident, yeah. 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 Uh, also, uh, a guy that you've sparred many rounds with and is well known to uh, the boxing world is former WBC champ and currently WBC, I believe you'll be number 10 soon, Saggy Obiga. Now, uh, would, I know you've sparred many rounds with him. I've watched your sparring. Would you be confident of beating Saggy Obiga? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm good friends with Sakia. We've done you know, thousands of rounds together over the years. But, you know, if, if that fight came up and... Uh, you know, I'd, I'd be more than happy with it. I mean, he, he is a great fighter, a strong fighter, a very yeah. powerful fighter, but, you know, I'd be very confident in my own abilities. And, uh, you know, if, if it happens, you know, I'd, I'd definitely back myself. I mean, your, your sparring sessions with him have been very willing. I mean, uh, and in, in those sparring sessions, I've seen you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Yep. And he's known as a very good puncher, mate. So it'll be an exciting fight if ever it happens. That's right. Uh, also, we've got... Um, Blake Caparello is WBO number five. Now he's um, he challenged Sergi Kovalev for the uh, WBO one seven five pound title. He's very clever, but not really a puncher. Yep. Have you boxed him at all? I Spoke? have. Yeah. He, oh, you spoke he's, Caparello? He's, yeah, he came up to the gym a couple okay. of times before, and okay. we've done some rounds before. I mean, right. yeah, he's uh, a tricky fighter. He, yeah. He's definitely very skillful. Yeah, in, he's in, clever. In ways and uh, mm. you know, actually, he, you had Kovalev down. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's a little bit surprising. I mean, he can, he does things a little bit different, yeah. um, a little bit unusual, but you know, he, he seems to have a bit of success with it as well. Would you be confident against him? Definitely be confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it'll be a great fight. I mean, it, it's one of those fights, I guess, that are very exciting because you, know, you have to do things a little bit different yeah, against yeah. those type of fighters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Rowan Murdoch. Another Australian-based, uh, super well-rated super middleweight. He is WBO number six. Have you sparred? Yes. Yeah, I've done. You, you've <laughs> sparred them all. Sparred them. Good on you, mate. Yeah, uh, okay, wrong. his biggest wins are Manny Siaga. Yep. Uh, it was Manny Siaga over the hill uh, in 2014. Yep. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, he's he, got a good record, eight and one. He does. I mean, he's a very skillful fighter. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, I I really enjoyed um, doing rounds with him as well. Um, he has a, a great sort of conventional style and right. uh, um, very fast on his feet with, with his hands. So, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd love the opportunity to fight him as well. Um, okay. Yeah, if it came up. Well, we've got all those guys who are uh, based in Australia that um, so they've got the opportunity to fight Daniel Gill if they're interested. <laughs> now, when you look at the, the world champions, we've got WBO champ is Arthur Abraham. He's five foot nine, 35 years of age, mate. What would you think about fighting Arthur Abraham? Um, you know, fighting Arthur, whether he's, you know, I guess, 29 or, or, you know, whatever age he's at, he's going to be a tough fight for he's anybody. Still, we're still, <laughs> still winning. Still winning his fights. Winning. He's a very powerful fighter mm. and uh, you know, he has uh, a world of experience as well. But you know, I'd love the opportunity. If, if I had to go back to Germany again, then, you know, I'd, I'd jump on the plane again. Um, you know, I guess fighting for titles is... is you know, what what we all want is what we're yeah. aiming for, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to 
yeah, I've okay. had the opportunity to fight him. And when you look at it, you've been very successful in Germany. I don't think any other Australians have gone there twice and been successful on both occasions, which you have, um, against um, uh, Felix Sturm and also um, uh, Sebastian Sylvester. Okay, uh, the IBF champ is James DeGaulle, 29 years of age, 6 foot 1, uh, 21 uh, wins, 1 loss, 14 KOs. You did fight a, a common opponent in Jared Fletcher, he fought him as an amateur, you fought him as a pro just on 12 months ago. Uh, what are your thoughts about James DeGaulle? I'm sure you've seen plenty of him. Yeah, I've seen plenty of James and uh, you know he's a very skillful fighter, mm -hmm. um, he can bang as well. Um, you know, so if that one came up, you know, I'll be... Be a good fight, well. I would think, for you, I because be uh, yeah. you've got a lot more experience at the top level than what he's got. Yep. But he seems to be a fighter that's on the improve. Yeah. And he's coming off a big win over Andre Durrell. Now, the WBA champ is the one... Andre Ward is regarded as, as the best 168-pound fighter in the world. He's defeated Carl Frock, Arthur Abraham, Saki Biker. Um, what do you think about Andre Ward? I mean, yeah, everybody knows. I mean, he's a great fighter. He's, yeah. you know, he, he can do it all. Yeah. Um, he can bo box, he can punch. I mean, mm. yeah, you know, he's the type of guy. He's, he's going to be a handful for anybody. But, you know, if you, you talk about fighting the, the best fighters in the world and, and what you'd like to do, um, you know, that, that can be one thing. Um, if but the opportunity came up? Yeah, if the opportunity came up, I, I'd be there. You know, yeah. I haven't said no before. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I'd, You're not going to start there. now. That's right. WBC, uh, WBC champ is Badu Jack, uh, Swedish born, uh, Las Vegas based. His best win was over George Graves. It was a close fight. Um, Badu Jack, you had a look at him? I haven't haven't seen him fight yet, so okay. yeah, I'll be definitely having a look um, okay. in the near future. Okay, mate. Now, um, you've had some very impressive wins, uh, Daniel. Uh, Felix Sturm, Sebastian Sylvester, Roman Carmazan, who you stopped. Uh, and Anthony Mundine. Um, who do you feel is your best performance in the ring so far? Uh, I think I sort of look back, you know, they're all, uh, you know, I guess, tough fights. They all were, had plenty of pressure in different mm. ways, but I think the the fight with Sturm, um, you know, where is I had your my best win? IBF title up, up for yeah. grabs as well, you know, we're yeah. fighting for the two titles. And, right. Um, you know, I had, you know, there was probably about 10,000 or so in the crowd, and yeah. I had about... I think three Aussie fans. Yeah. <laughs> you had all the Germans yeah. against you. Yeah, I had everybody yeah. against me, but you, you know, still it, pulled it off. I, I did, and uh, mm. yeah, it was a tough fight. And yeah. uh, at any moment, I knew if, if I slipped up, Sturm's mm. the type of guy that would have taken advantage of that. So mm. I, had to, I had to be strong for the whole twelve. So Felix Sturm is also fighting at super middleweight now. He's already had one super middleweight fight. Uh, would you be interested in going back to Germany and give, giving Felix Sturm a rematch? Definitely. I mean, if, if they wanted that fight, you know, I'd be all for that fight as well. I mean, it, <coughs> it, it, it does make it different, you know, moving up a weight. Yep. Um, but I'd definitely still be confident of, of beating him again. You can do it again. Yep. Okay, there's a fight for you, uh, Felix Sturm's Connections. If you're interested, Daniel Gill will go back and give you a rematch in Germany. Um, now, a big fight that all Australians are talking about, a uh, potential fight, is a uh, Danny Green versus Anthony Mundine. It doesn't look like Anthony Mundine's real keen. Would you pre be prepared to step in uh, Mundine's place and fight Danny Green? And also, have you had experience sparring Danny Green? Yeah, yeah, we've done done plenty of rounds with Danny. Um, you know, early on, you know, as professionals through the amateurs, and, and when I first started yeah. um, in Phoenix Gym as a professional, you know, we've done done some rounds as well. So. Uh, we, we do know each other a little bit. And yeah. he, he knows what it's I'm a nice like. guy, Danny. And, uh, he is a good guy as well. So you know, but it's I, all business in the ring. That's right. I mean, if that's the fight that you know, that my team you know see as the next one, then you know I'm, I'm going to be all for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Danny, you know, is well known as a big puncher. Um, you know, he's, he's starting to age a little bit more now. So I mean, so he's 42. Yeah. You're 35. Early next year, right? That's right. Feb yeah, next February. year. Yep. So. So, uh, yeah, you, you just never know. What weight would you be prepared to fight him at? He weighs about 82 kilos now. Yep. His last fight, I think, was about 82, 83 kilos. So would you fight him at 80 kilos? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't go heavier than 80. You know, 80, I'm yeah. fighting a, a middleweight, uh, super middleweight So you'd now. have to spot him uh, a, a bit of weight. So middle your right weight's 76. So yep. you'd be giving him about 14 pounds in weight, probably. Yep. So, um, 
But that's that's an interesting fight, mate. I'm sure a lot of people would like to see a Danny Green, Daniel Girl fight. Yep. Yeah, and no, I think it'll be I think it'll be an exciting fight anyway. You know, yeah. Good good Aussie fight. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, uh, you've been in the ring with both Janady Golovkin and Miguel Cotto. Now, that fight has been talked about, uh, uh, a possible fight between Cotto and Triple G. Uh, who would you pick to win that fight, mate, and why? Uh, I think it makes a good fight. It makes an interesting fight. It's just really hard to go past Golovkin at the mm. moment. You know, watching him in each of his performances. Too strong. Uh, he, he's just powerful in each yeah, punch. Yeah. I mean, he, he's dam fight. damaging in each punch as well, and, and, he, and he does find the mark as well. So, I mean, you have to give the guy credit because, you know, whether it's against a more skillful, a, a faster opponent, you know, he's still able to find the mark and, and hit them, and, and he seems to be able to hurt people when he hits them as well. So, mm. you know, I know Kodo's been in some tough fights over the years as well. Um, he's taken some, some big shots before, and I'm not sure whether he could sustain mm. getting hit from Golovkin yeah. so much. And he applies so much pressure. He, he never stops. So yeah, that's right. He's a future uh, all-time great, there's no doubt about it. Well, once again, Daniel, thank you very much for your time. And best of luck for the future, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks, Cheers, Ray. All Thank the best, Andrew. Thanks.